as cross-border exchanges between Hezbollah and Israeli forces intensify. Now, these pictures show the aftermath of an Israeli strike earlier today, which killed an official of the Palestinian political party, the Fatah movement. A senior member of the group said the attack hit the man's car on the outskirts of the port city of Sidon. Now, this incident marks the first such strike on a member of the Fatah movement led by Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas since the start of the Gaza war. The shelling across the border began after the October 7th attack on Israel with Hezbollah, a Lebanese political party and paramilitary group, which is designated a terrorist group by the U.S. saying it is supporting the Palestinian people. Though the fighting has so far been limited to southern Lebanon and northern Israel, there are concerns that the rest of Lebanon could get caught up as the conflict transforms into a wider regional clash. This is particularly concerning for the over 250,000 foreign domestic workers in Lebanon, a large number of whom are from Kenya and from Ethiopia. Reports indicate that a number of these workers are anxious to return home. In fact, 1,500 Kenyans have registered to be evacuated by their government. I spoke to one of these domestic workers who works on the outskirts of Beirut. This Israeli footage shows what they claim is a hit on a Hezbollah arms depot in eastern Lebanon on Monday. As the missiles continue to fly back and forth on the ground, people are worried. It was so shocking. I was shocked. When the sound barrier breaks, there was a smoke uh, in Beirut. So I thought it was a, a bomb blast or something like that. But when they come home, they don't mean, oh, no, this was not a, a bomb blast. This was a sound, sound barrier. Yulita moved to Lebanon just over a year ago and lives on the outskirts of the capital, Beirut. She's among the 26,000 Kenyans living there. She feels stranded as she can't afford the ticket to leave Lebanon. We are here because of our problems. Yes, we, are, we came here to work, but we were not prepared that if uh, something like this happens, we ask this amount of money for uh, emergencies like this. No, we don't ask this uh, money. And the tickets also prices increase. It's not like before. The tickets increased because many foreign nationalities were moving out of the country. Flights to Kenya cost up to an estimated $1,000, with the average monthly salary of a migrant worker set at about $150. Yulita has her passport. But for many migrant workers, their travel documents are taken away under the country's labor sponsorship system known as kafala. It forces foreign workers to seek their employer's permission to change jobs or to leave the country. Western nations like the UK, the US and France are asking their citizens to leave the region with tensions worsening. Yulita's family back home are very worried about her safety. We haven't been able to sleep much because we are not sure what the situation is in Lebanon. We appeal to the government to help Yulita come home and get a job here so that she doesn't have to go back overseas for work. This isn't the first time migrant workers have been stranded in Lebanon. The COVID-19 pandemic and the economic crash of 2020 left many trapped. Ethiopia and Kenya make up the largest percentage of the almost a quarter of a million migrant workers in Lebanon. Both governments say they are putting plans in place to help their citizens. The world over, within the iron system, the keeping of employees or migrant workers' passport is forbidden. Within our laws, we have emergency travel documents, but our embassies across the world are able to facilitate our nationals who are stuck abroad because of loss of travel documents. The International Organization for Migration told the BBC that if a conflict occurs in the country that you are living in, then...